Yo, I'm Nez, and dropping another impromptu review on y'all. This time, what we're gonna be doing a review of is the BAM. This is the rigid 18 volt subcompact multi material saw. Now, <clears throat> any of you who've already seen any of my videos, you know that I'm a fan of rigid, mainly because of that BAM, that lifetime service agreement. Um, you know, I could go out and get different brands like Makita or DeWalt or whatever. But you want to know something? I'm not a professional. You know, I never claim to be. I'm an at-home DIYer. I figure things out on my own. So, and I'm not exactly, um, <clears throat> um, I'm not exactly the most, or, 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 let me reword that. I am a little bit clumsy with these tools. And so... I'm prone to possibly drop one occasionally or something like that. So that's where, bam, this lifetime service agreement comes in, um, which we'll get into more into that uh, later. So uh, why don't we just get into this box? Uh, but before we get into this, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that way you can be notified of uh, when I put out new uh, reviews like this. And um, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And uh, why don't you do me a favor and share this video to someone who could benefit from this video. And, uh, it will help uh, the channel out immensely. Now that we got all that out the way, let's get into this. This is the front of the box. Right here, got a little artwork. That's what she looks like. This is just the tool only. I already have my battery sitting back there. My 4 amp battery that I'm going to slap into this bad boy. Even though a 2 amp battery probably would be better for the whole compactness of it. But I don't have any 2 amps um, just yet. Um, I ordered some, so I should be getting those pretty soon. And um, But in the meantime, we're just going to do it with a 4 amp. And that's the good about, thing about Rigid. All the batteries work in all their tools. So, you're good to go. Just the front, you cut aluminum, PVC tile, drywall. Lifetime service agreement. That's your model number, R87547B. This is the other side, top of the box, I should say. As is, you get three years, but when you register at rigid registration, you get a lifetime, baby. You got that side, you got your barcode there, you know, I like to show you that. This side over here it comes with, it, it, you know I mean, it shows you a little bit more information of, on it, I should say. bottom of the box got some uh, more specs let you pause that read it for yourself got your specs here and back of the box more info I don't know how well you're seeing that. It is kind of an overcast day out here, so I'm not even sure how well this is lit up so you can see it. So we'll see when I go back and edit. All right, <clears throat> so um, let's get into this box here. Nothing else in the box. Just put that to the side right there. Okay. <clears throat> you got your literature, basic literature, telling you all the safety precautions, all that stuff. You know how I feel about that. I ain't reading it. <clears throat> Comes with three blades here. Looks like we got a, a, a tile fiber cement blade. So you can use this to cut your tiles and stuff like that, ceramics. You got your metal. So this is cutting your metal, you know, sheet metal, stuff like that. And this is your drywall and plastic. So you're using this to cut plastic. I want to know what, what's here. Are you, is it, will I need this cut wood? Um, I imagine probably this one would probably cut wood, but, um, hmm. It's a good question. I wonder if they do have a wood blade. Just in case anyone knows that the arbor size is 7 16ths. Um, 
I know it's a little odd arbor size, but um, it's 7 16 in case you are in Home Depot and you need to buy some more wheels where this is synonymous to Home Depot, so that's probably the only place where you can get them. And there are three inch wheels. So <clears throat> let's, I happen to have a piece of fiberboard. So I guess this, which one? Which one would go good with the fiberboard? Drywall plastic. Okay, so I'm gonna try this drywall plastic with the fiberboard that I have. And this is the tool. This is how it is in comparison to my hand. You got your spot for your battery back here. Got your trigger. Forward and reverse. It is subcompact. Your spot over here to put your blade. It comes with a built-in chuck right here. You use the chuck, it pops, it slides right out. It's in there pretty tough so that we don't have to worry about it just flying out. You use this to adjust the depth of your cut right there. And you use this also to remove your wheel. There's your locking button. You press down the button and then turn this to unlock the arbor. And then you just screw it off like so. Oh, you have to hold down the button. Duh. Make sure you don't lose that. Slide your wheel up in there just like so. Oh, this comes out too. Duh. Take all that out. That was in there. Okay. Now, one thing that I noticed from other people that didn't mention is that the the head could be adjusted to make your cut because depending on the size of the battery you have in there, it's gonna get in the way of your cut. So what you do is you adjust the head to make the rear of it come up more, and then you can come down onto your cut. All right, so let's uh, slap a battery on here. See what we're working with. Just so we know, we have a full battery. So, see how much battery this thing chews up, fits on here. Now with this battery on here, like I said, with this battery on here, it makes it kind of like five pounds. But I think with your two amp battery, it's only, they say it's only like three pounds. But it works. I think I have this on wrong. Hold on a second. Take the battery back out. Maybe I need to put it between these two chucks. Okay, yep. I gotta put it in between. Huh. See, that's why sometimes it pays to read instructions. But, you know, I figured out without the instructions, and that's precisely the main reason why I don't read the instructions, because some things you should be able to figure out without having to read the instructions, because some things just operate a certain way. But, you know, I figured it out without before I damaged the tool, so. Okay. We should be good there. Slap this bad boy in. There we go. Now you have your your uh, trigger to uh, see. This thing speed. This thing spins at nine thousand, uh, nineteen thousand RPMs. Nineteen thousand. All right. This is what she sounds like at max. Low. Barely even hear it at low. It's like a whisper. All right, so what I'm gonna do, now that we're 10 minutes in this video, 
almost 11 minutes. I'm going to set up something to cut. Uh, like I said, I have some fiberboard over here, a couple things to cut. So um, I'm going to adjust my blade depth, my guard depth, and uh, let's do that right now. I should have had the power off before doing that, but or the battery out, I should say. But there you go. All right, let's uh, set her up and uh, cut some boards. Catch on the flip. All right, we back in. We're all set up here, laid out. About to just make a couple quick cuts. Let's see what we're working with. So um. Let go. Oh, see, that's where it comes, where I was talking about rotating the head, because the battery got into the way. So, why don't I, this isn't too hot. So now the battery should be out of the way, so I can finish this cut. Easy peasy. Do another one. And just so you know, so you can see the edge there, that's what the edge looks like. It does pick up quite a bit of dust, but you know, it is a saw. I always get hung up on that end piece, I don't know why. But um, seriously. Who couldn't use something like this? This is cool as hell. Like, it's small, it's compact, it's for little quick jobs like this. You know, I got something else I'm gonna try cutting. Hold, let, let me pull that out and see if this will work on that. Okay, I have this piece of board here that I need to cut at this part point right here. Now this board is a little bit too thick for what I have here, but I just wanna see if it can handle it. This is, you know, that the particle board uh, type material. So we're gonna see if this, um, this drywall plastic blade can handle it. I mean, maybe I should use this fiber cement blade. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna try this first and see what happens. If we're having issues, then obviously I'll switch it over real quick. So let go. So obviously it's fiberboard, kicks up mad dust, so there's that. But it literally glides right through it. So I don't want that to that wow, it was literally right there. It was literally right there. Let me see if I can uh do this left-handed so I don't lose that. It's probably the, not the smartest move there. Let me come from this side and do it. It's the chip off. Finishing type blade, so it definitely did a finishing type cut. I mean, obviously I was uh, hair off, but it doesn't matter. This is going to be on the inside, so we're going to be good, and this is going to be painted anyway. So, but nice smooth cut. So, depending on the thickness, you can easily, you literally glide through the MDF fiberboard like butter, like literally. Um, this is three quarters, so I would say nothing more than a half inch. Maybe uh, um, five quarters, I should say, um, or I should say five eighths. Nothing more than five eighths. Um, let's see if I can find something else. Oh, you know what? I wanted to test plunge cutting. Excuse me, I got dirt all over my lens here. You're supposed to be able to do plunge cuts with this. So let's just check out the plunge cut situation. I'm gonna leave it at the depth that it's at. Cut a go. Let's 
put this bad boy in reverse because you're supposed to be able to go forward in reverse. And I just blew a crap load of dust on me. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna plunge cut it, come backwards, and then go forward. See, I should have had it at this depth the first time when I tried cutting because literally I didn't have an issue. I tried to uh, adjust the blade to just thick enough, but I guess I didn't have it thick enough. But this bad boy works. <clears throat> if you could use something like this, definitely it's worth the money. Um, I'll put the links to Home Depot where you can get this because that's where you want to get it. You want to buy this on Amazon. And that's what brings me over to the part that I was telling you about before, the uh, LSA, the Lifetime Service Agreement. <clears throat> um, lifetime. When they say lifetime, they mean lifetime. For as long as you own the tool, you're the owner. When you register it, only register to you. It carries over a lifetime warranty. If anything happens to it, it doesn't matter. If you decide that you want a brand new one one day, you take this bad boy and you spike this bad boy like a football after your team just scored a game-winning touchdown. And you call them up or you hit them up on a website, let them know, say, hey, you were a roofing and uh, it fell off your tool belt and, and it fell down and it broke when it hit the ground. No problem. They, they'll they see if they can either, they, they'll try to repair it. If they can't repair it, they'll send you a new one. Simple as that. Lifetime. Lifetime in a, a tool. So, but you have to register within 90 days of purchasing the tool to get that lifetime uh, service agreement. So, be mindful of that. Doesn't this automatically out the box? You get three years. You get three years. Anything happens, a uh, three years limited warranty. But um, when you register it, lifetime, set it, forget it. Anything happens to it, get a new one. You know, if you decide you want to sell them, you want to sell someone new ones. Like I said, break them and then cash in for your lifetime. Um, warranty and then sell whoever you're trying to sell to a new one so you can get more money for it so um but definitely 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 this i wish i kind of wish i had some metal or some some uh tiles to cut to show you i really don't have any of that stuff but um you have the blades for it you got your like i said you have your metal blade here and then you have your ceramic tile you know, blade here. I don't, I'm not sure if it, I don't know what it's going to do with porcelain, but um, it says uh, tile fiber cement, whatever fiber cement is. I'm not sure what that is either, but um, it should cut those no problem. Um, it definitely has the speed and the power to do so. That little bit of cutting I did, I used up one bar of battery. So this thing will chew up some batteries. So um, a two amp hour battery on here will probably get you probably about 15, 20 minutes worth of cuts before the battery dies. Um, this right here, I'm gonna say about an hour with this size battery. But um, hey, you shouldn't be using this to make your, your as your main saw anyway. Um, this is just for like the fine detail work, sort of like little cuts like this. So um, with that being said, um, hit me up in the comments below, below. Let me know what you think about this tool. I really like it and I think you'll like it too. Um, I saw several people online do reviews of it, but like I said, I'm the average person. Uh, you know, I'm like you, um, not a professional. And so I think my um, point of view is a little, carries a little more weight for the average person. Um, if you're not a professional and you're like me, I'm gonna tell you to get this. If not for the tool, for, for I mean, obviously for the tool, but main, you know, you know, 50% tool, 50% lifetime, warranty on this bad boy because like I said anything happens to it fixed or replaced no questions asked no nothing like I said spike it like a football cash in get a new one or at least get the one you have repaired like new so um, hit me up in the comments um, like subscribe all that stuff um, I'll drop the links for Home Depot in the uh, description for this bad boy uh, but definitely definitely if you can use something like this definitely I recommend it definitely get it and I'm out this piece cop that.